things and seen a lot of things that was not wisdom. But the scripture said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. So we can get the wisdom from the Lord to know when to move and how to move. And we can let the Spirit of the Lord move among us. And, uh, you know, uh, when Jesus was going through Samaria and uh, sat down at the well, and uh, they were hungry. They were hungry. So he sent his disciples on into the town to get food. And whenever they came back, then... Uh, they wondered why he wasn't eating. He said he had food that they didn't know anything about. Yeah. He was able to minister Lord, to that God. woman uh, there that day and let her see the air of her ways. And she got gloriously delivered and went back into the city. Said, come and see the man that's told me all that I've done. That's Hallelujah. We'll find out when we start obeying the Lord that... Uh, that uh, He'll take the place, his presence take the place of a whole lot of things in our lives. Right. But my, I'm telling you, we need the Spirit of the Lord to move in our church services yes, we do. on yes. Sunday morning yes. and on Holy Sunday God. night and on Wednesday Praise night. God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this when we read the book of Ruth this morning. It's already getting a little later, but I'm not going to get in that big a hurry if you'll just help me here. Come on, come on. But uh, uh, the preaching at the minister's conference, and I, they got a word for the little thing. I call them a thumb drive, and I've got one ordered, and it'll be in probably this next week, should be in. And if you want a copy of that, then I'll let Brother Tom take mine, and he'll put it on his computer back here. Because all he has to do is plug your thumb drive in and, and put it every bit on that. And that's all it'll cost you. It's just what it costs you for that piece of little thing. That's all it'll cost you. Then you can put it on your computer and play it and listen to the preaching and everything. Now, you might not like it as much as I did, but, uh, I mean, I was it, to me it was coming straight to the preacher. Yes. And uh, some of it was to me was better than the others. And uh, I tell you, Brother Blue, Mike Blue, if you listen to it, and he got in to, to preaching on revival, and it took him a little while to get his message laid out. And because uh, I didn't think he was bored, but I know how people are now. If you ain't just jumping up and getting right with it, then they think, well, that's a boring sermon. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, he got with it before he's over with. Yeah. And uh, we had a great, great time in the Lord. And uh, so if you want that, uh, all you got to do is get you one of them. As soon as I get it to Brother Tom, and he'll be able to get you one. And uh, you'll get him a tip for doing it for you, and that's all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, no, no, no. All right. Uh, Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. Good to have this young lady with you with us this morning to get back there and get your name. You just be a young lady until I find your name. And uh, we're glad she's here. But uh, Ruth chapter 2, and the Bible said that Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitist said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless thee. And Boaz said unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel 
that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers whose sheaves, uh, uh, reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from thence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath truly been showed me all that thou hast done unto my, thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward he hath given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like one of thine handmaidens. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word this morning. You notice what the scripture said here in verse 12 uh, of this, of this uh, uh, passage uh, of scripture here in and uh, chapter 2, and he said, The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Hallelujah. Are we trusting in the Lord today? Fully trusting in the Lord? Oh, yeah. Now, I don't want to put us to sleep this morning because... It's easy whenever we're not feeling the best and our minds to get scattered uh -huh. and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, this woman put her complete trust in the Lord and Boaz was able to see that. Right. Yeah. It was obvious to him that this woman had left the land that she had been raised in. Amen. And uh, uh, come to Israel with her mother-in-law, left her family, left her gods. Yes. Now I don't know what what Naomi showed her while they were in the land of Moab. We remember when you read that story, the reason they were there that there had come a, a famine in Israel, and so they went down into Moab to live until the famine was passed. And while they were there, Naomi's husband died. Both of her sons died. All she had left was two daughters-in-law. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, in spite of all the bad things that had happened, Ruth caught hold of this God that Naomi served. That's right. And because she got hold of that, she wanted that more yeah. than she wanted anything else that was in Moab. Yeah. And whenever Naomi found out that God had visited Israel again, the famine was passed, and she journeyed back to Israel, this Moabite woman left her homeland and went with her. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. It was her trust in God that made her different. You hear me? Right. It was her trust in God that made her different. It was her trust in God that put her a cut above everybody else. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Now, I don't think we need to walk around with a spirit of arrogance about us by no means. 
But I'm here to tell you today that if you're saved by the blood of Jesus, you're cut above the rest of this world. Because when Jesus comes back, you're leaving here and they're staying. Hallelujah. Are you helping me here? Praise God. Boab recognizes this and he approaches her boldly with a blessing. The Lord recompense thy work. In other words, God's going to make amends to you for any that's what recompense means. Yeah, uh -huh. God's going to make amends to you for any loss you've suffered. Uh -huh. He's going to compensate you. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know if he knew what he was prophesying there or not. I really don't know. But uh, the scripture said that that, that uh, in, in, in chapter 2, <coughs> when we started reading it there, amen, that Boaz... Boaz was a, a mighty man of wealth. Amen. I guess perhaps that he felt like when his words was flowing from his mouth that that uh, that because of he he was who he was and that if she kind of stayed close that he'd make sure that she had more than what she had from the country she come from. Right. But I don't really know if he realized that the time she got through. Amen. And God got through. She's going to be half owners of everything that he had. Hallelujah. Are you helping me here a few minutes? Right. Amen. God's going to recompense you. He's going to pay you back for all that you've lost. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. This morning, or right here today, after we get saved, I don't know how many times that I've had others tell me this and the devil's done it to me too. Look what you left behind. Okay. Amen. I'm here to tell us today that God will give us greatly way more than what that devil ever could. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, he can. Amen. Praise God. Christ compared himself. Amen. But before I get here, amen, he said the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come to trust. In other words, you've got under his wing now. And you've come to, you've got under him. Amen. And he's going to take care of you because you've got under him. Kind of tell us today, God help us to realize more than ever that even though we may be going through trials, tests, and various other things, it's God that's going to take care of us today. Lord, would you help me preach? Would you help me preach? Christ compared himself to a hen. Whenever he told him, he'd come out uh, 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 right above Jerusalem, and how off would I have gathered you as a hen would her brood? Right, yes. And we know the, how that is. Most of us, uh, uh, if we've got any age on us at all, have, have seen hens with the little chicks and just the least sight of danger. Uh -huh. Those little chicks will run to that hen. And I don't care how many hens are out there with little chicks. Every little chick knows which hen to go to. That's right. That's right. You ever think about that? i never seen one yet run to the wrong hen. Amen. They know where to go. And we ought to know where to go, shouldn't we? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And our text mentions the wings. Amen. The wings of God who a poor, weary soul has come to trust. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've got the right message or not this morning. I'm struggling with this, but God knows yeah, all about us. But God has swift wings this morning, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Swift to drop on the enemies of God's people. Come on. Yeah. Swift to protect us. Yes. Amen. Lord, why am I going through this and going through it so long? Can't you see the protecting hand of God? Amen. Upon your life. Amen. God could just pull his hand back and, and allow what we're going through to devour us. Right. Amen. But he chooses not to let it devour us. Right. And sometimes he don't choose to deliver us through it. He right. just simply chooses to walk right along right. beside of us right. while we're going there. Yeah. And his wings are swift for to protect us right while we're dealing yeah. with what we're having to deal with. Right. 
right. right. We can't blame God. God's there with his protecting hand. And he's got broad wings today with that wide wingspan. Oh, yeah. Amen. Not too long ago, I saw a, a big hawk. It's out on the farm there where Brother Brad and him lives. And I'd say that that hawk, probably whenever it lit and was eating whatever there was there, it was an old deer carcass and it was snow on the ground, wasn't a whole lot to get, and it was glad to get what it could. And to be honest with you, it run the buzzards off that day and got in on that deer carcass, and I believe that that was probably the biggest hawk that I'd ever seen in my life. It had at, it had at least, from where I was standing from, to see it, it had at least a three and a half to a four foot wingspan. The biggest one I think I'd ever seen. Amen. And then they tell me that some of these eagles have a wingspan of, of about seven foot. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God puts one wing over our cradle and the other wing over our grave, friends, amen, he's got broad enough wings to keep us covered through our walk of life. Are you helping me preach? Amen. All the way through our walk, he's keeping us covered. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory. God, where are you at? Why don't we just look up and see how far we are from the shadow of that broad wing as he's got us covered this morning. Come on. Oh, yes, God. Yes, Hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever studied it much, but talking about them broad wings first, I was driving down the interstate one day, up the interstate. We've come up 65, coming from Alabama, up through Alabama. And I looked over to my right and a hawk, this, it, it, it was a hawk. The only place I've ever actually seen, excuse me, an eagle whenever it was in Canada. But it was a hawk and, and, it, and it wasn't a large one, probably had at least a two foot wingspan or better. And as it flew in on its prey and it spread its wings out and flight flew in on that, by the time it got its talons on whatever it had flew in on, whether it was a mouse, rabbit, or a snake, you know, whatever it was, and it flew in on that and got its talons on it. But by the time it had those wings spread, that thing was no way for it to get away. It was caught. Yeah. It was done. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Are you helping me here? Yeah. Amen. That broad wingspan. Yeah. And I, I've read, I've read, especially to get back to the eagle, I've read to where they could actually swoop down and pick up a pretty good sized calf, if you will. Amen. A pretty good sized calf, maybe a little better than newborn, pick one up in its talons and fly away with it. Amen. A pig, sheep, goat, whatever is there for its taking, they can swoop in and do that because of, 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 of the strength of the wing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling us today, amen. The world before the flood, amen, before the flood of Noah, and one day just one clap of the wing, if you will, and that world was gone. Uh -huh. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. One clap of that strong wing and the power of Babylon fell. One clap of that strong wing and the walls of Jericho fell. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. One clap of that strong wing. Amen. After we put our trust under the shadow of his wing. Yeah. Amen. One clap of that wing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God, would you do that for my favor today? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm here 
Scripture tells us today, God don't have to take advice from nobody. No, he don't. He don't have to take advice from nobody. No. Those archangels that's around the throne of God, he don't take advice from them. <laughs> Amen. They're there to do his bidding. Right. Are you helping me preach? <coughs> They're there to do his bidding today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He don't need nobody to pull his chariot. He's got the wind. Right. Are you yes. helping me preach? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He don't need nobody to charge his batteries. Amen. So he can see where he's going. He's got the lightning. Hallelujah. He is the light. Yes. I wish you'd help me preach today. I'm talking about getting under the shadow of his wing. Yes. Hallelujah. You, Praise Jesus. God. I'm going to close real quickly. Jesus. The Lord's my strong tower. Yes, he is. He's my stronghold. Yes. He's my fortress. Yes. Amen. Our sins were many. Our sorrows were great. But quicker than an eagle. Amen. Our Lord strikes back at sin and temptation. Amen. And moves them out of our way. Or either walks us right through them. Right. Hallelujah. But above everything today, he's got gentle wings. Yes, he does. Amen. The psalmist said, he shall cover me, cover thee by his wings. The gentleness of God today as he deals with us. Amen. He's our divine shelter to keep us from the cold, to keep us from the things of this world. God's there for us. I wish I could preach better. I really do. Amen. But I'm praying today that we can get under that shadow of his wing and realize what God said here. Well, what God said here uh, 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 to, to Ruth. The Lord recompense thy work. God sees what you're doing. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou hast come to trust. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, I got no nobody or nothing to go back to. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell Sister Esther one day, you know, I said, I got nowhere else to go. Just talking to her, husband to wife. Said, You're all of God. I don't have any place else to go. If you run me off, I don't have a home. I don't have any place at all to go. Not any place that I really want to go. Are you helping me here? Hey, Amen. When we come to Jesus, He's all we've got. Right. Hey, Amen. There's nobody else to go to today. Right. Nowhere to go. Nothing else but Him. Hey, Amen. And all He sees the trust that we're putting Him today in Him today. And He will not let it go without rewarding us for our trust. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray today. I wish I could have preached. I just wished I could have preached. Hey, Amen. I don't want to stand today all over the house. And if you've got a need before the Lord, you've got something you need to talk to Him about. You know, if you've got need salvation, you need to, whatever you need from God. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You mean the Lord would give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost today? Yes. God can do whatever He will today. Yes. We set our mind to Him. Yes. Can we stand today? Thank you, God. Let's come to this altar. Thank you, Jesus. Come right on. Thank come right on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, come right on. God help us today. God help us today. Help us to get untangled from the things of this world. Help us to get untangled. Help us to make sure we're plugged in, Lord. Oh, hallelujah.